Richard Burton was a man with a magnetic charm who lived a jet-set lifestyle. He became famous as Hollywood's most highly paid actor and infamous for his weakness for alcohol and women. But his roots lie in a humble village in South Wales, more used to producing coal miners than movie stars, Pont Reed of Venn. I have loved Richard Burton as an actor ever since I can remember. It's that distinctive voice, it was like velvet, the characterful face and the intelligence. For me, it was the complete package. No other actor could ever get anywhere near him. And I've never been here before, to Pontry de Ven, so coming here is really special. Because I want to know how he got from here to becoming a world-famous star and what this place meant to him. I've turned to the BBC archives to see what Richard Burton himself had to say. I really know what to say about my race. I'm so proud of them and I love the Welsh with a passion that's uh, almost idolatrous, particularly the South Welsh, the people I know best, and particularly the mining class. His story began here. He was born Richard Jenkins and he was born in this house on the 10th of November in 1925. He was the 12th child of Dick and Edith Jenkins. But sadly, when he was two years old, his mother died shortly after giving birth to her 13th child. He went to live with his sister, who was known as Sis. I still think of her as a mother because I don't remember any other mother. And I stayed with her for the next 11 or 12 years. His family struggled for money and Richard was determined to change his life. He found a mentor at secondary school, drama teacher Philip Burton, and declared his intention to become an actor. His voice was dreadful at the time and his speech, he spoke Welsh at home. He sp yes. spoke Welsh at home and he spoke English with a very strong Welsh accent. So he said to me, change them. Philip Burton gave Richard elocution lessons to hone the voice that was to become world famous. I was submitted to the most ferocious discipline because I did my schoolwork during the day and at four o'clock I then started with Burton. That generally went on till ten. That sitting room became a room of terror. But the hard work paid off. Richard changed his name to Richard Burton in honour of his teacher and guardian. Armed with that voice, great looks and his acting talent, he was spotted by Hollywood. His marriage to Elizabeth Taylor sealed his superstardom. But he didn't forget his roots. He used his newfound wealth to take care of his family, using his first big paycheck to buy a house for each of his siblings. It's not my province. I give it away, give it to my family. The fact that I was able to take care of a certain amount of people has given me some pleasure. The fact that I had the power to do it. As a child, Richard Burton always used to come to this street to visit his sister Hilda. And later on in life, when he's a huge star, he always returned. I've come here today to meet Hilda's daughter, Sean, who still lives here. Hopefully she's in. She's got to be in. She knows I'm coming. Oh, Hello! Hi, Paul. I love you to meet you. <laughs> Come on in, I'll just ring. I just noticed this photograph's taken in this very room. Look, there's Richard leaning against the fireplace like most blokes do. You, you've given the fireplace a bit of a, a makeover. A little bit of a Sean makeover. That's it, darling. It? And that's my mother there, Uncle Rich, of course, and Sis and Elbert then took Uncle Rich in as a two-year-old. Yeah. How important was his family and his need to provide for them? Oh, I think it was the most important thing uh, because they'd gone through such poverty, really, sure. growing up, that when he had money, he didn't want them to go without anything in life. Gosh, that's, he's got such a kind nature. Yeah. Such a kind nature. Something very special happened to you when you were 13. Tell me about that. Well, I don't know if my mother would call it special, but um, I was a very naughty girl. And a teen and 20 club opened in Port Talbot. And I spent most of my school days there rather than in school. So I was caught mitching. And then Uncle Rich phoned and he was in London with Elizabeth. And mother said, oh, I can't deal with this child anymore. You're going to have to do something with her. 
So he said, put her on a train, send her up to London. So my punishment was going to London, being met at uh, Paddington Station by Gaston the chauffeur, and uh, <laughs> taking me to the Dorchester Hotel, going up to the terrace suite, and then going to meet Elizabeth, you know, for the first time. That's well, not had... punishment, is it? <laughs> not no. at all. I loved it. But I did start going to school after that. <laughs> What did this place mean to him? Why did he keep coming back throughout his life? He did feel a lot of hiraith, we call it in Welsh, uh, a longing for Wales. And he used to love just coming into the house and then he'd sort of relax and say, oh, now we'll speak in Welsh, you know. And yes. then, with all the family, we only spoke in Welsh with him. Burton returned to the village to visit his siblings, but also his father, known as Dick Bach, a miner, less likely to be found at home than in the local pub. Richard's father was known as a hard drinker, and this pub, the Miner's Arms, well, this place was like a second home to him. He was always in here. But Richard also had his own drinking issues, and there was one period in his life where he nearly took things too far, when his elder brother Ivor sadly fell and broke his neck while staying at the Burton's home in Switzerland. Later, he died as a result of his injuries. Richard was devastated and the drinking escalated. He revealed how serious his drinking became after his brother's death on the Michael Parkinson show. Well, there was a second or two, I think, uh, perhaps about a year ago, when uh, I didn't fancy much staying alive. Really? You contemplate a suicide? Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, I wouldn't kill myself in the ordinary sense of the word. I wouldn't take pills or drugs or anything, really, in that sense. But you can, of course, uh, can drink yourself to death. Mm -hmm. And that's very, rather pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> It's better than falling on a sword. <laughs> there was an awful guilt in Anchorage. Ivor was the one. He always looked up to Ivor. Ivor was always the better rugby player. He was, you know, he was physique was sure. fantastic. And he was really like a father figure. Burton lived the glamorous life of an international superstar, travelling all over the world, constantly photographed and scrutinised. Yet he always returned to the village. No matter how much his life changed, this place didn't. But why did he love it so much? Quoting James Joyce, he once said, every man is searching for the place he belongs to. It is, in my case, the place where I came from, which is pont de -Vin. Richard Burton died in 1984, at the age of 58, of a cerebral hemorrhage. He was buried at his home in Switzerland, but his friends and family, including his new wife, Sally Burton, held a memorial service to pay tribute to him in the place he loved so much. He's remembered here in the graveyard of Jerusalem Chapel. And here is the Jenkins family gravestone. His mother and father are buried here. It's in quite an amazing and poignant spot overlooking all of the village. It really is a, is a wonderful resting place. And it's quite a poignant moment for me as well to see this. There's an inscription on it and it's written in Welsh. And it reads, Siren Cymru Arbid, which translates to Star of Wales, Star of the World. <laughs> 